All right, welcome. Good morning. And this is uh, the Construction CPA's Coffee Cafe. I am the Construction CPA, Lisa Raish, and we are um, having technical difficulties this morning. <laughs> Not really. Oh, sorry, guys. I apologize. I, uh, yeah, we'll call it technical difficulties. How about that? <laughs> All right. So, our topic this morning is nine ways to improve your cash flow in construction. And we work with a lot of construction, and this is a chronic problem across the industry. I have this conversation pretty much every day with every client. So let's go through some nine tips. Let's go through some things that can help you out. Might be things that you can easily kind of check the box on. Um, maybe things you're already doing, things that you should be doing. So first is you really want to develop accurate projections. And what I mean by that is, I don't mean just your what you think your cash is going to do month over month. We are big proponents here of a 13-week cash flow forecast. You need to know that on week three, you're going to run out of cash. On week nine, you're going to run out of cash. What happens when you go month to month in a, for a cash flow forecast is the ups and downs within a month are not reflected. All you're simply seeing is what we estimate cash flow to be on the close of the month. It's the week to week that can really catch you um, off guard. So we want to know four, five, six weeks out where we think you may have a shortfall and therefore project for things that you could potentially do to get around that. So that's going to really be the first, I think is, is cornerstone to cash flow is you have to project it. If you don't know where you think it's going to like ebb and flow where it's going up and down, uh, you'll never really be able to get ahead of your cash flow. It really gives you a chance to honestly get down to nuts and bolts and look at exactly what you're spending your money on, especially when you're looking at it week to week. So that's a big one. Uh, to me, that is like number one, um, doing a cash flow projection. Next is project costs. You need to be able to control your project costs. Projects that are going on for a significant period of time or even projects that are only going on, say, a month, six weeks, eight weeks, you need to be in control of those costs. You need to be managing the costs, determining whether or not you're out of um, out of budget on a line item. That needs to be monitored regularly. If you're off on one project, it could potentially throw off all the other projects from a cash flow pr perspective. So you need to track your expenses and match them up to the project that they belong to so you can actually see what you're spending on these projects. So super important, job costing is again, foundational. We talk about it a lot here. You've got to know what you're spending on these projects. If you don't, you can't, you'll have very, you'll have difficulties projecting your cash. And if you can't project your cash, then again, you have another problem. So again, need to know what your job costs are and control them. See where you're out of whack, why you're out of whack. Is it something that you're perpetuating client to client? Is it something you can fix? Those are the things that are going to help your cash flow. Third is change orders. You've got to process those change orders quickly. Too often we see it, the work related to the change orders is done like almost in like instantaneous, right? The work is done almost immediately. And then it's a month plus. Now we're going back. Oh, we really need to bill for this change order. Well, you've already incurred those expenses. Those in some cases, if the dollars are associated to your team, the team that works for you on a weekly basis, those dollars have gone out the door already. And so now you're waiting four, six, eight weeks to pay on that. So process your change orders quickly. Not just do the work on the change order quickly, but actually process an invoice quickly so that you can in turn get paid on that as you know in a, in a quick fashion so that you're not waiting until, oh, the end of the project and we're now getting around to sending client invoices for change orders. The other thing that can be a real cash flow killer in both ways is either overbilling or underbilling. 
Too often we see clients just are overbilling. We're over, over, over billing. And we get to the end of the project and you've pretty much built out the entire project, yet you still have a significant amount of expenses that are associated with that project that are still coming in. So on a very, very simplistic way, you've run out of cash before the project is over. So overbilling is, is terrible. And then underbilling is awful as well, because again, let's go back to the change orders. You've now incurred a lot of a lot more expenses, but you haven't sent out an invoice for that. So again, you don't want to underbill. You don't want to overbill either because the lack of cash flow somewhere along the line will catch up with you and you won't be able to pay those expenses. You need to do like any other industry, you have to do price shopping. Where can you get the best price for your materials? Um, you know, again, I'm sure some of you have standing relationships with subs. Are you getting the best price for that? And I'm not saying look for the cheapest because that's not always the best thing either, but do some price shopping like in like you would in your own home, right? You're going to go out and price shop that new television you're going to buy, right? You're going to look for the best price. You're going to look around at the different stores. Where can you get it online? You know, whatever it is. So you want to do the same thing in your business. Do price shopping, right? Figure out where you can get the best price. Again, still maintaining quality, but get the best price. Six, streamline your billing processes. We see far too often clients do not have a standardized process around how they bill their clients. So we bill, sometimes we bill a week after, sometimes we bill the third week of the month, sometimes we bill six weeks later. It's all over the place. There's no standing process as to how you bill and when you bill. This can be a little bit more of a sticky situation when you are in the type of industry, for instance, if you are in the trades where you're tending to go from job to job on a daily basis. For instance, if you are the electrician who's going in and doing a project here, or you're the plumber coming in and doing a project there, you're going in many cases to different projects either in a day or, or in a week. If there's no consistent process around how and when you invoice those clients, that's where you're going to run into cash flow challenges. You've incurred expenses related to that, but oh, you haven't sent out an invoice for it. I'll give you an example. I had work done in my home a couple of years ago. The work was done in on the third week of August. I didn't receive an invoice until the last week of September. So I don't know why I didn't get an invoice earlier, but it was almost six weeks before I received an invoice for that work. And then of course, now I've got to find a checkbook um, because they did not provide me with an electronic way to pay. So now I've got to find a checkbook and write a check and mail a check and you know find a stamp and all of that. So create a streamlined way of billing. It's the same time every week, the same time every month. It's the same person who does it. They do it the same way every time. It is really an SOP for you. There's a standard operating process or procedure for it. That is what you do every time. That way, you now can, in fact, project your cash out. You can't project cash if you're not. So if you're consistently billing the first week of every month for the prior month, you can start to project the cash coming in moving forward. Again, if you're, well, sometimes I invoice the third week of the month for the prior month and it, there's no consistency there. You really you can't project your cash. You can't estimate when the cash is coming in. So creating a process that not only is consistent, but also a process that any individual who comes into your business can basically pick up the workbook. This is how we do it. And it doesn't stop because Susie, who the one is does does the invoices, went on vacation. Someone else can pick up that. So there's a number of reasons why you want to streamline that billing not only for consistency in your business, but honestly for cash flow. You need to make sure that cash is coming in. And then the way that you go out and you collect that cash as well. Consistently, again, how you follow up, when you follow up, all of that is a consistent standard process that's followed all the time. Next, you want to monitor and you need to manage those receivables. Don't just invoice someone and then wait to get paid. You need to, as I mentioned, have a standard process. How do you reach out to that customer and follow up? 
When do you follow up? Do you follow up by email? How many times do you follow up by email? When do you start calling people? You need to have a standard process as to how you do that so that you can, again, now start to project or estimate when those payments for those invoices are going to come in. So again, process, process, process around your financial function is key. Around how you invoice, when you invoice, all of the above is key to projecting when it's going to come in and also main maintaining or ensuring that you actually have cash in the bank to pay all of the expenses that you're incurring. Number eight, make it easy for your clients to pay. My example, that particular vendor did not give me a way to electronically pay. So, you know, now I'm looking for a checkbook. I don't tend to run, write a lot of checks. So now I'm looking for my checkbook. I'm, you know, and now I need a stamp. Do I have to go to the post office and get one stamp because I don't tend to mail much out anymore? Don't make it hard. In this day and age, give them ways, other ways to pay. Online payments, ACH, um, you know, for instance, offer your banking instructions on your invoices so that if they want to ACH you, that you can get the funds faster. More businesses are paying electronically now. We here pay electronically. So again, if I have to look for my checkbook and look for a way to pay you, then it makes it harder. You're waiting longer. And it's just a lot easier. Most people are expecting to pay electronically, even if it's, again, via a wire. You want to provide the easiest and quickest way for someone to pay you. And the last, and again, is not necessarily the least um, important, but, you know, negotiate favorable terms with your payments. So some of you may have a relationship with a specific uh, material vendor. You do a lot of business with that material vendor. You have the opportunity to potentially ask for better payment terms. Could I pay 10 days later? You know, what whatever the arrangement happens to be, but arrange, if you can, better payment terms for what you are spending your money on, your expenses, your vendors. But on the other side of it, is there an arrangement that you can make with your customer to get paid quicker? I don't love the word discount because that can be a swear word in this business, but you know, is there a little bit of an incentive? Can you incentivize them? to pay you quicker. So again, there are, you know, nine tips for you to use to improve your cash flow. Some of these things you should absolutely already be doing day to day in your business. Some of these things you could potentially, you know, start doing now. So again, develop accurate cash flow projections. Control your project costs. Process change orders quickly. Avoid under and over billing. Do some price shopping like you would for your own personal expenses. Streamline your business, pro your billing processes, right? Automate them if you can. Have a standard operating procedure as to how you do that. And that rolls into the next one, monitoring and managing the receivables. Again, that entire process is all standardized. It's done the same way every month by the same person. You get process, a standard process that you can almost bank on every month. Next, make it easier for your clients to pay you. Please don't make it hard. And the last is go out there and try and negotiate favorable terms. If you can get better terms with your vendors, great. If you can incentivize your customer to pay you a little quicker, that's wonderful as well. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please drop them in the chat. We'll always respond to you, you know, try and get back to you as quickly as possible. I look forward to seeing every single one of you every week here on the Construction CPAs Coffee Cafe. I look forward to seeing you here next Friday and have a wonderful weekend.